Hello people, in this video let us look at paralytic ileus or neurogenic ileus. So first of all, they can just call it as ileus also. Right? So basically ileus is affecting the ileum, ileum. So where is it? Here in the green you can see ileum. It's a part of small intestine. So this one can stop working. So instead of sending the food after for absorption, it has to send it this way, right? Into the large intestine, it has paralyzed. It is not at all doing the peristaltic, peristaltic activity. So there is some problem with the nerve here. So this is a paralytic ileus. It's also called as neurogenic ileus. So here you can see there is a distended abdomen because of this condition. Here the nerves are there. Remember here the nerves are present, but the nerves are not working. Here the parasympathetic uh, ganglionic nerves are present, but they are not working. This could be temporary. And so what will happen? There is paralysis of the bowel and there will be large collection of fluid and gas within the bowel resulting in abdominal distension. Okay, so uh, just understand what we are looking at now is paralytic ileus, right? So here what happens is the nerves are present, okay, the nerves are present but they are not working, right? But in Hirschsprung's disease, that is the congenital uh, aganglionic megacolon, in that one, the nerves itself are absent. There are no nerves at all, right, in that particular section. But here in uh, uh, paralytic ileus, the nerves are present. His sprung mostly affects the large intestine. So his sprung is more about the large intestine and paralytic ileus. We are talking about the ileum or the small intestine. Okay. <coughs> so hope you have understood. So intestinal obstruction, so many obstructions are there in that you have um, a dynamic that is paralytic or neurogenic. That is here there is no mechanical obstruction. It is just the nerves. And his sprung is another uh, type of uh, uh, e-dynamic, okay, that is neurogenic. So you got it, right? So basically, this one uh, is affecting, his sprung is actually talking about the large intestine. Okay. <coughs> Paralytic ileus, we are talking about the small intestine. So there is no physical barrier. There are many other causes of ileal obstruction like adhesion, obstructed hernia, stricture, intersusception. Uh, ileocecal tuberculosis, bands, worms, so many other. These are the differentials that you should know. Okay. Then coming to the cause. Why does the ileum uh, stop working? So this can be mostly, um, they are saying it is because of post-operative. So somebody had a splenectomy surgery or some other surgery um, and uh, there was exposure of the intestines and then they have handled the intestines or it got contaminated, foreign body, etc. This will cause a temporary su a suppression of the parasympathetic activity. Or uh, even after the surgery, you handle it, handled everything properly and there is no contamination, etc. But once the surgery is over, if they allowed oral fluids too early, that also can happen. So very strange, right? So after surgery, there should be a gap, looks like, for the oral fluids. Then uh, falling peritonitis, again, pus can be the chief cause, toxins, etc. Right? Uh, then... Um, <coughs> Reflex. So, uh, following a fracture of the spine, spine. So, you hit the spines. Uh, so, there can be a reflex. It will stop working. Uh, retroperitoneal hemorrhage. So, again, it will stop working. Looks like any small thing, it will stop working. Okay. Hypokalemia. So, this is very important to know. If the person has less potassium, nothing, the muscles will not work. Right. So, here you have the muscles of this ileum not working. They will refuse to work. Give me potassium, they will say. Right. So, for hypokalemia will also cause generalized muscle weakness. So, these are the causes. So, what are the causes can you say? Low potassium after the surgery, uh, peritonitis, hemorrhage, right? Can you say reflex? Reflex? Yeah, that's enough, reflex. Okay. So, now let's go to clinical features of these people. We already told you, gross ab abdominal distension, there will be tympanic note all over. Respiratory cardiac functions could be impaired, no colicky pain, they have actually dull pain, they have dull pain and they will uh, not pass flatus also, okay. And they can have vomiting, <coughs> effortless vomiting. Failure to pass flatus, effortless vomiting is a characteristic of paralytic areas, okay. And when you auscultate, you can hear tinkling sounds due to the shift of fluid from one coil to the other coil, okay. They'll have severe uh, uh, fluid electrolyte protein depletion. So, can you tell the clinical features of um, paralytic ileus? Say, effortless vomiting, 
effortless effortless vomiting yes then see <coughs> failure to pass fleetus failure to pass fleetus tinkling sound tinkling sound dull pain dull pain abdominal distension abdominal distension, distension. okay so all this can occur okay now let us move on now, <coughs> uh, some clinical features they are comparing here between the other things and ilium so what did they say vomiting will be there distension yes pain will be dull um, and it is um, uh, constipation is not there initially they are saying but actually here they said even phlegmatis they cannot pass peristalsis can okay, you can see but it is paralytic here so here you will not see okay paralytic you will not see peristalsis why will you see peristalsis at least not in this place right so i think this when we should remove <coughs> paralytic ileus what will you see in the x ray you will see there will be distended loops okay there is no air fluid level that's what they are trying to say you will see distended loops okay sentinel loop sign sentinel loop signs there okay so you should write sentinel loop look at this dynamic or a mechanical kind of obstruction that is the air fluid level right but in paralytic you don't have okay so what you should understand here is a sentinel loop sentinel loop sign you can see in paralytic ileus can you see sentinel sentinel loop sign loop sign paralytic paralytic ileus ileus yeah sentinel loop sign paralytic ileus okay now uh, let's uh, move on how will you treat this so basically everywhere you should write this drip and suction drip and suction drip and suction so they'll give the iv fluids <coughs> they'll put a rails tube okay they'll rest the gut they will aspirate right so here drip they are giving the fluid some uh, whatever uh, nutrients he wants he is getting directly parenterally and they are suctioning out whatever is there um, see uh, rails tube aspiration they are doing to give the rest to the gut so basically they are giving the, the person is getting nutrition and whatever is there in the intestine that also is being removed okay at least in the stomach whatever is there they are removing so that it can rest okay so this is drip and uh, suction so hypokalemia if it is there you can give potassium so when will you remove the rails tube when the abdomen is soft when the bowel sounds are heard and the patient has plast flatus that time you can remove this uh, rails tube and then slowly give them some oral fluids and then some soft diet and etc okay this is how you will manage drip and suction is very important here what you should understand is you are giving drips and giving nutrition and you are also aspirating from rails tube so suction so the nutrition is directly going to his uh, body without going through the intestine drip and suction for paralytic ileus okay so this is the uh, treatment for paralytic ileus so what you should understand here is there is no surgery but it is um, a surgery topic right uh, so you should know that you should not do surgery in these people correct okay bye bye and especially why it is there in surgery is it are post surgery these people can have paralytic ileus so you should be very aware of it right